Hello and welcome back to the show. Today we are recapping the Everton Arsenal fixture. It was ugly, it was boring, it was a 1-0 win for Arsenal. It was a moment of brilliance um, amidst a bunch of passing by Arsenal and, and a lot of defending by Everton, which was able to separate the two sides. But um, that aside, it wasn't a very, very good viewing experience, especially if you're a neutral. Now, the key word I want to talk about today is support, because I think support really applies to our system, where we're going wrong. Um, when you think about us bringing the ball forward when we're attacking, are we supporting the ball carrier when the ball is brought up the pitch? And by that, I mean, are we running with them or are we running away and isolating the ball carrier? Because that seems like a very common thing for us to do. Equally, are we supporting those higher up the pitch? For example, Beto, you know, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, these guys. A lot of the time, Beto was passing to Decore, and that was the only option. Obviously, if you're an Arsenal defender, you know where to put the weight of numbers. Like, you know where to position yourself. You know where the ball is going to be directed if you're doing the exact same thing over and over again. So... Did we have the correct balance? Absolutely not today. We didn't have enough attacking impetus. Defensively, we weren't too bad, obviously. The more attacks you permit Arsenal to complete, it's going to eventually result in your downfall somehow. That was how we conceded the goal today. Look, I could say that this was expected. I do think it was expected. Going into the fixture, we already knew that Arsenal were way higher on a pedestal. Obviously, the skill difference, the skill imbalance was quite ridiculous, um, as you know the results would suggest this season. Um, so it was probably the sensible call for us to sit back and just let Arsenal do their thing like they did in the corresponding game last year. But that being said... The attacking threat, like, we barely entered the box in the first half hour. I don't even think we had, like, more than half a dozen touches in our attacking half. Like, this is a big problem. I mean, you know, probably more so of a problem because we're one point from 15. We should have won games a few weeks ago. Um, and this Arsenal fixture, which we probably weren't expected to win, was then slated as a more important fixture than it should have been. So, um... Look, I'm not saying it's the end of the world that we've lost today, but but to sit back and have that much of a lack of attacking intent, that is a big concern. Now, look, I think we were going for the draw, the nil-nil, but the problem with having that mindset is that if you concede, you are stuffed. Because you've set your whole game plan up to be defensively intact, if you concede, then obviously you're you know, chips need to go into the attacking side of things and you probably haven't thrown enough resources into actually planning for this game from that perspective. So that's where the problem really lies. And to talk about that system, the counter-attacking doesn't really work because we don't have the passing ability to bring the ball up successfully and cleanly. That is what's required of a counter-attack. For a team like Arsenal who were recovering very, very well when they lost the ball. They were getting back. They had a well set up line to block us from bringing the ball forward. You know, we need players that are skillfully minded or skillfully able. And we just simply put don't have those kinds of players. And then obviously in still play or when, you know, the defense was set up and we had to work our way through the Arsenal defense, it always resulted in in us just hitting a wall because Arsenal were pressing and that was putting us under pressure we were forced backwards we'd pass it to Pickford and he would just have to launch it long a lot of the time that usually does not work and we end up the striker will probably parry it down onto the ground but he'll have no one to pass to or the pass will get intercepted so it's a concern when we've got so few avenues to goal or so few options against better sides, because you can play those 14 teams that you probably have a chance against, but then you look at the other six teams and that's 12 fixtures where you're sort of, 
you know, trying to settle for a point in a game where where you can't afford to be so invested in only one side of the game. We can talk about midfielders. The midfielders, a lot of people would say they were woeful. And you would be correct if you said that because they did absolutely nothing with the ball. I mean, you were probably better off going DCL and Beto up front and then just having two in the midfield because you were already sturdy defensively and sitting back. So it's not like Arsenal could exactly run through you. They would have to pierce the gap. So you probably could afford to run two strikers and just give yourself a little bit more representation up front. It also would future-proof you if you conceded you had two strikers up there to, you know, potentially get the job done. Instead, we had Beto subbed off, DCL comes on, and then obviously the goal was scored, so we then didn't have that option of Beto to potentially bring us back into the game. We had to rely on Chimidi to, you know, get the job done, which obviously is a pretty tall order for a 19-year-old. If we talk about the player of the game, I mean, there were two clear standouts and they were both defensive, newsflash. The guy I'm going to give it to is Vitaly Mikalenko because I do think, I mean, talk about a response. He hasn't had a great start to the year. The few times he's come on, he's looked a bit exposed and off it. But in this game, he was obviously given a very explicit set of instructions to make life as difficult as possible for Saka. And he succeeded. You know, he gave away a lot of fouls, but I think that was part of the whole experience he was going to give Saka in this game. Um, there were times where he would be required to make up a lot of ground in having to run back and recover, especially when we got left, you know, exposed at the back and he was able to make up that ground, put the body on the line and execute a block, which I think a number of defenders did very well on the day, you know, putting their body on the line to block shots. Um, Jared Branthwaite, as usual, as has been for the last couple of games since he's come into the side, he has also been very, very assured. He was again today, no exceptions. But look, I, I think the main takeaway is, look, we're constantly seeing a lot of discourse on Twitter and such about Sean Dyche needing to get sacked. And usually I have a pretty long tether with coaches and I maintain that attitude for Sean Dyche as well. Because simply put, we can talk about obviously this game probably not being one we were expected to win, but because of the previous games, we needed to win this. And obviously if we don't win the next couple, it looks really, really, really bad, really dire the future for Everton Football Club. But the players can't pass. The players are not equipped with that ability. If they're not good enough, any system you put around them, you can change the coach, you can then change the structure because the coach brings in something new, but the players will continue to not be able to pass. That's a personnel issue. You're not removing the liability that comes with one of the most fundamental parts of any footballing system in human history. It was another blip. We need to be back with very similar shot generation to what we've been showing in the last few games. That is the only reason to have any form of optimism going into the Brentford fixture coming up. We can go the glass half full approach. We have the least goals, but we have the worst conversion, the most big chances missed and the worst XG performance. So look, we're generating the chances we need to convert. Do we have the quality I don't back them in because of the inconsistency each of these players hold with their performances. But that being said, it's got to turn at some point. And these guys are professionals. I mean, they play for Everton Football Club, so it probably doesn't come with a guarantee, but I think they can turn it around. So I'm probably more optimistic than most. Um, but yeah, we, we need to see more from this team because even though it was probably part of the plan to rather defend for our lives than actually try and go out and score to win the game um because they say defense or defense wins premierships defense wins flags defense wins titles that is not a sustainable way to win a football game you're not going to score the way we played today at all especially with the personnel we've got it's wrong to try win games on the counter when all you're doing is giving an already skillfully inept team 
as few chances as possible to go out and win a game of football. It's just not going to end well. So we'll see how we go, but thank you for tuning in. Apologies because my voice is gone. Um, it is not because I was raging at the, uh, the Everton game. I already knew that was a lost cause, but we will see you for the next fixture against Brentford this time next week. Thank you. See you soon. Bye for now.